A good friend of mine, uh, his grandparents owned a preschool and for years they put on a small pumpkin walk just for the preschoolers. Uh, about the time, by the time that me and my friends were in junior high, uh, they had stopped doing it because his grandparents had just gotten too old they didn't want to deal with it anymore. And my friends and I uh, took it upon ourselves to reinstate the pumpkin walk. So uh, ever since then, basically, we've been in charge of a pumpkin, a pumpkin walk every year, and that's how I really got into it. Like anybody else, I carved my first pumpkin probably when I was seven or eight, but this style of carving pumpkins really was about the time I became a teenager, probably around 13 or 14. My friends and I call this style of pumpkin carving poking. Uh, really, we poke the pumpkin and then we shave into the surface of it, but we just refer to it as poking. I get the ideas for my patterns from all sorts of things, from just searching on the internet for good pictures to uh, what's popular right now. Often I'll, I'll uh, carve characters from movies that are currently out. Just kind of whatever gives me an idea. The two main kind of patterns that I've done are two and three tone. Uh, when you carve a pumpkin, you don't have too many options when it comes to colors and lighting. You kind of have light and dark. Uh, you do have an additional option if you decide to cut all the way through versus only cutting part way through. That gives you three tones. So a two-tone pattern would be something that is just black and white. You don't carve all the way through anywhere. Uh, in a three-tone, in certain places, you will carve all the way through. Those places will look really bright for highlights, and it just adds one more level of depth to your carvings. A good pumpkin that's easy to carve will have a good smooth surface. Uh, it isn't too hard so you can cut into it nicely. Uh, although it's not too soft because you don't want it to fall apart as you start cutting into it. The primary tool that I use to carve pumpkins are linoleum stamp cutters. They're sort of a V-shaped knife. They come in all sorts of different sizes. These tools are good because as opposed to like a, a pumpkin carving set that you buy at the store, um, they're really durable. They're not going to break on your first pumpkin. Uh, also, what's unique about these tools is that with them you can really easily just carve on the surface of a pumpkin rather than cutting all the way through. The main steps to carving the pumpkin, once you've got a pattern, is you apply the pattern onto the pumpkin, either by taping it or gluing it or pinning it on. Then, uh, and the, this is the reason we call it poking, is we take some sort of a poking instrument, either a thumbtack or a sharpened screwdriver or really whatever, and we'll actually go around the pattern and poke everywhere that we want to carve. Uh, usually around the outside, the border of the pattern itself, plus any details on the inside of the pattern. Uh, once we've poked the entire pattern, we take the pattern off, and then we use our carving tools to actually, well, basically just connect the dots. We just follow along the lines that we've poked, and you get the main pattern itself. Then if there are any uh, big areas that you need to really shave a whole bunch, we have bigger tools that are used for scraping, and we use some other tools, some uh, sculpting loops or other things, to smooth off the surface. And that's really how you get your pumpkin carved. Once I've finished carving a pumpkin, I'll spray it with Lysol. Uh, I don't usually hollow it out initially. And uh, after I've sprayed with Lysol and dried that a little bit, I will actually seal it with Vaseline. Uh, it keeps in the moisture, it locks out bacteria that you've killed now with the Lysol. And then when you're about ready to present it, uh, when Halloween or a pumpkin walk or whatever draws near, then you'll want to actually clean out the pumpkin. After you've finished hollowing out the pumpkin, uh, to make sure that the light will shine through it evenly and as brightly as you want it to, it's always a good idea to take the pumpkin into a dark room, uh, light it the way you're going to have it lit, uh, and actually look at it, see how well it looks. If there are places where it's uneven or light just isn't shining through well enough, while you're still in that dark room with the light in it, you can then continue to hollow it out further until you get the lighting the way you want it to be. This style of pumpkin carving really isn't that hard. To get good at it, you do a couple of pumpkins 
and you really have it down pretty well. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> All right, let me start that again. <clears throat> so, what do you do step by step to uh, create these pumpkin? I mean, you've got you've got your pattern, you've got your pumpkin washed and ready. All right. What do you do now? 